Hello, everybody, and welcome to this month's podcast on the EdTech Mentorship Network. Uh, today's podcast is going to be on iMovie in the Classroom with the lovely Catherine Mulski, a.k.a. Teaching in the 21. Uh, before we introduce the panel tonight, I'm going to just go over a quick couple of things that uh, is about the EdTech Mentorship Network. So just to let you know, we have a couple back channels if you're watching this evening. Uh, one of our hashtags is ETMN on Twitter, or you can join us at the Google Plus community, uh, and you can just search that online by typing in EdTech Mentorship Network Google Plus, or you can go check up our draft website, etmn.org, to kind of see what we're building and some of the content that's starting to be shared there. Uh, if you're watching tonight live, we do have the question and answer feature on the Hangout, so you may, under the on the event page, type in any questions you may have, and I can fire those at Miss Catherine Mulski as she is taking us through uh, the tutorial tonight. And that is all. So we're going to be airing tonight at 8 p.m. as well as Wednesday on iMovie Stuff. Uh, as many of you know or can read below, I'm Victoria Olson, um, Miss Victoria Olson on Twitter, and I teach in Langley at West Langley Elementary in grade 3, 4, and technology. And I will turn it over to Jeremy so he can introduce himself, please. All right, uh, and I'm Jeremy Ensko. I teach grades 6 and 7 at uh, Cole Tai Elementary in the Nameladies Smith Public Schools District, uh, at Jeremy Ensko uh, on Twitter, and you can probably find me on most other social media uh, as well. And Kat, do you want to introduce yourself today and tell us a bit about yourself? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, my name is Catherine Mulski, and I'm currently a grade 6 late French immersion teacher for the Langley School District as well. I teach at Alex Hope Elementary, and I've been busy this year working on a lot of different side projects and in inquiry, but a lot of that is integrating technology uh, meaningfully in the classroom, and so iMovie is kind of one of my go-to um, softwares that I like to use. So I'm really happy to be here tonight to uh, share some of the things that I've kind of been able to hash out since uh, 2006. Actually, it was the first year that I started using iMovie. And that was a year that I started using with the old IMAX in the CET up at SFU. So it'll wow. be uh, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> IMAX. Yeah, oh my God. Um, the technology's stuff. moved along a little bit. On that. Yeah, iMovie has definitely moved in the right way, but uh, yeah, I definitely do a lot of side work as well with Final Cut Pro. Unfortunately, we don't have time for that. That's uh, that's a barrel of uh, monkeys in itself, but uh, yeah, I'm super jazzed to be here to share that with you guys today. So. Cool. Well, welcome. We're excited, and I'm, I'm excited because Kat is one of my very good friends from Langley and one of my first really local connections, but I found her on Twitter, oddly enough, so it's funny because we teach probably, oh, what would you say, like, 10 blocks, maybe 12, yeah. I don't know, from, from each other. And, you know, we didn't know that the other existed. We probably would have figured it out this year with the Digital Literacy Coach series. Uh, we had a dinner series this year in our district that we that got run um, from the board office. But, goodness, like, you find someone that's like-minded like you on, on Twitter and you find out that they're that close to you, that's awesome. So, yeah. yeah. So, welcome, Kat. We're excited to have you. Thank you. So, tell us a little bit about what you're showing us today. Yeah, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to split up both the two of these podcasts in two parts. So tonight I'm going to take you through mostly uh, iMovie trailers and how to get those started. This is mostly on iMovie for the actual computer or desktop. Uh, for many of you who might be watching, there are uh, two versions of iMovie also available through your iPad and through iPhone. Um, both are fairly similar, um, however, where you find things and buttons will be a little bit more different. So. Um, I'm just going to show you the interface that I have on my computer, and that's actually 2013. So I'm going to take you through that right now, and I'm assuming I can press on to screen share. Yep. Awesome. See if anything works here, because I know that I've been working really hard to have Chrome installed in my computer. <laughs> I do not live with Chrome. Growth area. Growth area. I know. <laughs> I know. Hey, there we go. So just bear with me, my computer tends to be a little bit slow, but I'm just going to select a window so that I can start sharing out what you can also see on my desktop. Um, I'm, also, I'm also glad that you're not using Internet Explorer because I don't know if we would have been able to have you on at all. <laughs> hey, man, whatever works, that's what I say, whatever works. So I'm assuming you can see my... Uh, well, we know that one doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> So the iMovie interface looks really similar to this one. Then 2011 uh, is a little bit different. This is 2013. Um, what you're seeing here is in the Windows. Um, 
over here onto the left hand side, this is where your libraries are kept. So a lot of the times when we upload things either from our phones or from cameras or any sort of uh, imported sources, it could be even a video camera, um, that's located in your libraries that you've uploaded into iPhoto. Um, the kind of the nicest thing about uh, Macintosh in general is that iMovie, GarageBand, iPhoto, they all talk to each other. So once you've um, uploaded your photos or any film that you've taken on any device and you've in implemented that into iPhoto, you're pretty much ready to roll with iMovie. So I've simply opened up iMovie tonight and looked for one of my events, which is found down here. So a little bit different from the interface in 2011. 2011's interface would have been here on the left-hand side as well where I'm scrolling. I don't know if you can actually see my magnification scroller. Is that looking like it's there? Anybody? Uh, nope, I don't see Oh, it. bummer. Okay. I can't see where your cursor is, though. It's just not can obvious. you see where my cursor is? Okay. So either way, that's where we would find stuff. So tonight what I'm going to do is actually just take you through a quick way of importing uh, trailers. And trailers is a really good way to get started with iMovie. It's probably the friendliest way. Um, and of course I'll talk about in our second podcast kind of going beyond the trailers. Um, however, this is the first way that I introduce things into the classroom. Um, I actually usually make a trailer myself and then from there I will um, share that with my students and then get them started with the interface. A lot of iMovie is quite intuitive, so the kids already have either had a taste of it via downloading the app themselves on their own phones or devices or, you know, even if it is their first time, um, it's pretty easy for them to kind of navigate where things are. And I find as a teacher, working with the technology in the classroom, it's been more about my own usage, kind of seeing how I like to use it, and then being able to troubleshoot for my students. So when, you know, they can't find something, well, I've had the time to explore that and then be able to share that with them. So in terms of creating, I mean, you have two choices up at this top window, if you can see where I'm moving my cursor over slowly. You have import, create, and share will only appear once you've started to create a project. Um, library, of course, is where you're keeping everything. Theater, I'll just touch on that for a second. Theater is where you're keeping all your final projects. So things that I've worked on or things that I've edited and then shared out will be found here. So some of my professional work or things that I've worked on will be found in the theater so that it's easy for me to then export into um, everything as small as uh, 720 and then as high as 1080 HP or HD, sorry. Um, so there's lots of different options, but going back into the library, I'm going to create a trailer. So it gives us two choices, either to create your own movie or to create a trailer. And this is what I find the most fun, is when the kids see the trailers for the first time, like how to create one, um, they get all these different choices of trailers. This might take a few minutes because my I can hear the fan going on my computer a little bit, so it's probably a little slow. Um, but when the kids get into creating the trailers, um, they'll have a menu that pops up for them. And what I really like about this is that you have the ability to preview what the trailer is going to look like first off the hop mm -hmm. by simply scrolling your uh, scrolling on top of the movie. So you see how the play button shows up. So I can preview that to see kind of what that looks like. Um, also, it tells me how many cast members. So if you were to assign a certain group work or you're trying to assign something going on with, you know, either just individuals trying to create a movie, then this gives the kids an idea of how many people that they're going to need um, in order to integrate this into the trailer. And we'll get into storyboarding in a, in a few. It seems to be taking its sweet time, but it will preview for us. So it gives you an idea, shows you the music. It will actually show you stock film from Apple. Um, and then it gives you an idea, too, of sort of the mood of a trailer. So same thing for pets or there's romance. I like retro, personally. That's pretty fun. The scary trailer I created for my kids for Halloween, they all helped. Um, as well as, you know, the kids can actually create um, sports casts, but that's more building on uh, individual projects uh, as such. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through um, one in particular. I think I'll probably choose retro because that's pretty fun. Um, by simply selecting it, and then at the very bottom here under cancel or create, I just simply click on create and it's going to open this up for me. 
it's going to ask me what, how I want to start creating what I want to title this. So tonight I'm just going to call this Nora, which is the name of my dog, which will be easy to find lots of film of her. Um, in terms of where you want to save this event, you have lots of different options. I tend to save things in finalized movies simply because it's the easiest folder to find um, and then retrieve later on. So it's going to load and create the trailer for you. And again, sometimes it takes a little while for this to load up because iMovie tends to eat up a lot of memory. So just as an aside, if you are working from a desktop computer, it's really important that your computer is running on really, really high RAM. Um, movies, pictures, uh, everything in general uh, to do with video and, and pictures runs, uh, needs to run on really high RAM. I just want to say, too, as you watch today, keep in mind that Kat, while she's uh, loading all this stuff, is running a Google, a Google Hangout at the same time. So yes. things might, like, you know, memory might be a little, a little bit that way. So just keep that in mind. Uh, yeah. Please, please yeah, it definitely won't be this slow when things happen. Like, for example, handheld devices such as your iPods and your iPads is going to move pretty fast. Once it's selected, it's going to pop up right away with a secondary menu. Um, so again, desktop computer run with really high RAM. Um, as soon as you start dealing with anything that's in HD or your students have downloaded a whole bunch of film, make sure that it's to um, the same computer. Um, word to the wise, when you are creating um, projects, things that I've trouble, uh, had to troubleshoot in the past, depending on how your computer labs are set up at your school, um, what I find is that um, because the students all have their individual uh, BCESIS numbers or their, their PEN numbers, um, and that's usually linked to an upload folder that's specific to that student as per division. Um, it's really wise that if you do have this installed on your Macs at your schools, that you encourage your students to continue to use the exact same computer each time. Um, sometimes we've had students that have come in, worked on it, and then you know they've tried to use a different computer a second time. And unfortunately, due to, to server issues, it just doesn't carry forward the same way as it would if you were using your own personalized computer. Um, so that's just something that I, I learned the hard way and some of my students in the past have learned the hard way. Do you so, have shared network drives? That yeah, we do. We tend to have, like I said, I mean, it's per division, so everything gets uploaded. So, for example, once a student logs in under their PIN number, you know, there are our drive as well as our inbox and outboxes as well as hand-in and hand-out folders end up popping up. Obviously, it's going to be tailored district to district. Um, but just as, a, as an aside, it's usually wise to just continue to work on the same computer each time that you're uh, finalizing a project. And Which so is typically the same on iPads, too. Um, but it's, it's saving to locally to the app that's on that iPad. So until you export, you can't actually share the final um, document, right? So, yes, yeah. Um, yeah. Absolutely. And another thing, too, is that... Um, a lot of the times the kids will kind of get confused as they're working in, in the interface. They're kind of like, well, where's the save? Where's save? Um, the beauty of iMovie is that it, it is saving ongoing. So when we do finish our session tonight and I do finish my trailer, all I need to do is simply X out of iMovie. And I will be able to retrieve this under my, my finalized movies folder, which is here again on the left-hand side where I'm turning my cursor. So many, many of the smart technologies actually save automatically, and that's where most people who are used to other things freak out without that save button. So yeah. that's a good thing to highlight. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, save is <laughs> save is automatic in this one, which is nice because sometimes the kids panic if something you know shuts down mid project, um, or if you know we lose battery power and set or power power or such. So yeah, so what we're looking at here is the outline, and what I like is this to div divide it up into three tabs. We've got an outline a storyboard, and a shot list. And I'll kind of touch base on all three of those because depending on how you want to roll this out with your class, it might seem a little overwhelming to, um, you know, give them a whole bunch of trailers and then, hey, just, like, go for it. Something that I recommend doing and something I can probably share with you guys so you can tweak this out is that there is a link from a blog post of a teacher who um, did actually generate a whole whack load of storyboards for iPad-specific and desktop uh, iMovie trailers. So something I recommend is previewing a trailer, showing the kids, like, get, give them a feel of what the trailers can look like, and then give them storyboards, physical storyboards that they can actually begin to work on so that when they do go to film, whether it's filming with an iPad or an iPod, which is in hand and filming can actually happen on device, um, then they have a better idea of what they're going to film 
less time is wasted in class. Um, you're probably going to have less deviance of, of behavior. You're going to have a lot more on task happening because you've got this centralized goal of what needs to get shot. And another thing I always recommend to my kids is that uh, film, 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 film. So you can never have enough film. That's that's a, a really big thing. I mean, obviously they, they say that for, for anything with film these days, but uh, you can never have enough shots because sometimes the kids will think they have everything. They come back, they try and finalize things, piece everything together, and then realize, oh, you know, Miss Malski, we still got to go out, we still got to film, and it's sort of like, well, you know, maybe we don't have the iPads that day, and then, you know, that slows down the process of, of finishing or finalizing the project. So storyboard, what I'm discussing here, storyboard is literally a printed version of what you're going to see on my screen here. Um, something that's really neat or a neat aspect of storyboard in iMovie is that as you run the cursor over, um, I don't know if it's present here, I might have, yeah, I don't have mute on, but normally it actually follows through and you can hear the sound or the music being played as you roll the cursor over. Um, this helps the kids visualize what it's actually going to look like when they add titles. All of these titles you can edit. So when the kids get creative, they can name their own film studio. They can choose a different um, intro to their film studio, and I'll come back to that in a minute. Um, but we're looking at you know, simply editing Zip Zap. Um, the reason why I also recommend starting with iMovie trailers in the classroom is that when you think about how they're pieced together and when you see a final product in the next little bit here, um, you'll understand the complexity of the programming in such that you have to have your soundtrack, you need to have all your editing and transitions, which is how two images essentially either meld together or don't. So you, sometimes you have a clear cut, almost like someone flipping through photos. That's what it'll visually look like. Versus something like a fade in or a fade out, um, which is you know something that iMovie offers. But in a trailer, it's already done for you. So soundtrack is done for you. Um, as is your your titles are preset, so I'm going to start off with this. So maybe I'll keep in the fight between good and evil. There's only one, and of course I'm not going to talk about a man today. I'm going to talk about my dog. I'm going to say one dog. It's a job. <laughs> and it's going to be special agent. Uh, we'll call her. We'll just say special agent Nora. Now, sometimes it's hard to get rid of the second title. Sometimes it's preset and won't go away. So in this case, I'll say Nora the Bulldog. Um, what I'm doing is going through my titles first, but there's no right or wrong way. Um, every, every kid's going to kind of have a way of, of doing this. And I actually suggest showing them the same thing I'm doing with you guys tonight, as in you create a trailer as a class. That is another way of introducing iMovie. So the kids get an idea of what they've seen and what is possible, but then we're not necessarily telling them everything because I want them to discover, I want them to play. I do want them to run into some problems. Um, of course, this comes with a, with a bit of time, confidence in, in your own usage of the software, but for the most part, most problems can be solved based on things I've already seen or things that I've, I've had to get out of myself. I find that Apple, um, their troubleshooting uh, pages on iMovie is pretty helpful. And of course, you can always tweet me and ask me questions about this because I live, breathe, eat, sleep this stuff. So, uh, yeah, so I'm going to leave Master of Disguise. That sounds pretty sweet. She is tough. She is a technological genius because, uh, of course, she's my dog. She got and it from her mama. Yeah, that's right, from her mama. And then when evil comes a knocking, well, how about when treats come a knocking? So I like to play with words. Yeah, treats. Yeah, grammatically correct here. Knocking. She'll be there. There to protect you. And then we've got lots of shots here. This summer, evil has met its match. Nora. And we'll continue. The bulldog. Ooh, there we go. Sweet. Now. Um, something that the kids have a lot of fun with is just simply playing around with the titling. You need to allow them lots of time in class to almost just pick their trailers. Unless you've given them a really specific task or you've told them specifically that you want them to use one specific trailer, you are going to hear a cacophony of sound in the classroom while all these trailers and all these previews are going off because the kids are going to start getting ideas. And that's actually a really fun time to simply circulate the room, 
see what the kids are liking, what they're seeing, what what they you know don't like, what they think they might use it for, and then get them back into their storyboards. So once they've chosen a trailer, you know they can get into tailoring their storyboards. You know what? That's happening. That's totally happening right now too. Um, Victoria knows that I'm I'm getting a puppy soon, and we go on, we go for weekly visits, and I'm <laughs> all kinds of ideas in my mind of okay, what what pictures have we taken? Yeah, uh, absolutely. What's, what's video? So where's where's it gonna be still shot if, if I make make a movie about my puppy that I don't have yet, but I can't wait. Uh, yeah, so that's really cool. You've already got me inspired to. Yeah, to it's a lot of video. preset, and and the kids, you know, we don't give them enough credit, but they are. Our kids are so visual. They are so visual. Um, you know, I would almost beat out visual now in terms of the, the learning inventories that I've done in the last couple of years with my groups, and the majority of them are much more visual, um, well over kinesthetic even. Um, and so it's really neat to kind of see what you've shown and what you've done to apply and then see what they do with it. And sometimes the kids just take it, you know, 15 times further, and that's exactly what we want. We want that type of innovation in the classroom so that they can kind of see how this would apply into larger scale projects. So, you know, yes, we're touching base on trailers tonight, but, you know, what does this mean in six months' time when we've had that much more time to practice and had that much more mastery? Now we're looking at creating PSAs that, you know, generate either attention through our community or PSAs like public service announcements that the kids could generate for their for their school. Um, I've had kids do that in the past so that's a really good uh, side project as well and I'm happy to share um, my templates and uh, lessons around that as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert film and that's done through finding my uh, projects here. So I'm going to go back to, let's see, there's my finalized movies. Now, sometimes I tend to lose things, so bear with me. But um, what I'll do is go back into my events so that I can actually add something to Nora's trailer. There we go. So it looks like it's kept that. So I've still got my trailer open on the top half here. Um, but I also have all of the viewing or all of the things that I've been working on underneath there. So I'm going to go back into my iPhoto library and I'm going to access um, a specific event. So if you're a folder person like I am, um, it's really helpful if you know, you've know you cataloged an event that that's what you're going to make the movie out of. And that's something you can also tell your kids is that, okay, we're going to make a movie, let's catalog it in a folder. Now this is going to look a little bit different when you are using handheld or you're using an iPad because a lot of the filming that the kids will do will actually happen real time. So they'll have the storyboard like you see up here and they'll go, hmm, I need a medium shot. Now those are just general guidelines. You don't have to stick to it, but the kids will see, okay, I need a shot with like one guy or one person in the frame. So then they'll go and seek that out, and then that can get added right into the frame right away. Now um, in that website that you, or that blog you mentioned, is that like those storyboards, are they on paper? Do they're you, PDF, you so they're yeah, actually okay. just a clickable link. I'll have to uh, dig through my, my bookmark archives, but I definitely have it, so I'm happy to share that. So um, people can get a bigger bigger picture rather than oh, just yeah, through absolutely. that? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, when I run uh, professional development programs with iMovie, however, given the short amount of time I have with them, I don't tend to use storyboards. Um, I get them using the, the hardware right away. It's like, okay, here's an iPad, let's get going right away. So that people can just make mistakes and learn as they go and then realize, I mean, it's it's such a quick learning tool because what will happen, and you'll see this with your own kids, is that they'll film something, replay it, and and um, and preview it to see what happens, and then they'll realize, okay, that was way too far away, or it doesn't fit, or we've taken the same shot twice, we need to redo this. And that type of feedback is something that I can't even give to my kids until I've seen the product. So the fact that they're seeing this real time right in front of them, in front of um, you know, using using the iPads, using the iPods, or even using the desktop computers is is a huge feat in, in being able to create a better product, but also be I mean the the amount of learning is almost immeasurable because you're not quite sure all the time what's going on in in their heads in terms of calculating what's happening. So what I'll do is I'm gonna insert and what you'll see where my cursor is is that I'm going over photos and events. Your photos or stills stills do work in iMovie as um trailers, but I don't recommend using them. iMovie trailers are usually reserved for a lot of film, 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 um, but you can still use them. Um, however, you'll, you'll notice in the corner here of this, um, of this mainframe here where I'm moving my cursor back and forth, 
says 3.3 seconds, that's how long the clip needs to be based on the timing that the trailer is given to you. So if you can imagine looking at a still for 3.3 seconds, it's not entirely long, but it'll seem long based on the speed or the pace of the, the trailer once it's completed. So let's just insert some film. Um, this one I'll just, it's simply, a, you know, you're picking up and dragging and dropping. Now you'll notice that all of a sudden my, the box here has highlighted in yellow and it's giving me the option of timing. So when you download a clip, you have the option of taking only parts of that clip. You can see the clip that I'm trying to steal here of Nora is 4.5 seconds, but maybe I only need, like it recommends, 3.3. So right now I've got 2.7 to the end, or 2.6, and I'll take 3.3, or around that. So how did you get the yellow box again? The yellow box is simply, I'll, I'll just untouch my, my cursor, and then I'm going to tap the box again, mm -hmm. and then I'm going to hold down my mouse and pull. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I'm just pulling away. Um, if you choose to select the entire box, which is done by a double click, um, what it'll do is if I pull this into here, it's going to take the first 3.3 seconds of that clip. So in previewing it, I just bring my cursor back over in the fight between good, and then doo -doo -doo, there she is, and evil, right? So, I mean, that clip's not too bad, but when the kids will start realizing that timing is of the essence. So they might take a clip where someone's not paying attention for the first two seconds, and then they'll insert it and be like, well, why, isn't they, why aren't they looking? And then you'll explain to them again that they need to go back and go back here, take just part of the clip. So skip the first couple of seconds where a kiddo's not looking, and then, oh, there's the head attention. Now I'll drag that and drop that back into the frame. Okay, so then that just changes it a wee bit. I mean, kids will get more picky than, than we will as adults, to be honest with you. They, they do have an inner perfectionist and, and film, film critic in them, for sure. So I'm just going to continue to scroll down here. <laughs> Lots of photos, for sure. So there's one with walking with a friend. So, you know, maybe we'll take a portion of that. And that one's only 1 1.2 seconds, so that's really quick. I'm not going to need a lot of film there. So I'll just take the first two first basically one and a half seconds there. And so the kids, I mean, in terms of usage, it is it is so easy in the sense that it's a drag and drop, right? Like it is, they've made it really clear and easy for, for kids to use. Like we've got this one, this one's good. I, I think that's something that Apple does too. They have tons of drag and drop features, but if you don't know about them, then yeah. it's not, it doesn't actually appear to be easy to use because people are looking for what button they have to press to yeah, add things absolutely. and things like that. So if you don't know that, or um, the thing I was thinking of as you're, as you're talking is like, so kids are using um, probably a different device, like you said, like an iPad or a, or a phone or a camera to actually shoot the footage. Yeah. And then they actually have to upload those photos into the library. So on a school computer, that's going to look a lot different because at least in ours, they're wiped all the time depending on who signs into the computer. Right. So in that case, like for, for your best bet for iMovie trailers in particular is probably starting with your iPads. Like it really is. Right. So what I'll do I'm actually... I'm making I'll sure be, that you're using the same one so everything stays yeah, the same. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And it's like too. at our school we kind of do honor system. Like we've all, we've all come to consensus as staff that all projects remain on the iPads. So, you know, if someone else's class uses it, I mean, they'll see their project in process on, in the theater, right? So if they went back, they'd see, you know, projects in the theater that are ongoing or that the kids have created. But none of that is going to get deleted until they've touched base with that classroom teacher. And so we just simply let our configurator know that, you know, no, Division 7's projects, they're still not done yet. They'll be finished by Sunday. We export them. We usually export them to um, Edmodo, our classroom uh, social media site. Um, and then, you know, we can take them off from there. And then the kid, what I like about that, too, is that it's so key that the kids actually see their product, preview their product in front of an audience so that kids can give instant feedback to those groups. Um, it's, a, it's a huge process in, in the learning that, you know, kids need to see what they've done. You know, it's, it's all great, like, yay, we've made the movies, awesome, now we move on. No, no, we need to have a screening. We need to make a big deal of this so that the kids really get into the moment. Like, we have done screening. We literally called it a Division 7 screening party so that you get, you know, the kids in, 
popcorn's gone, everyone's like sitting around the movie theater, you know, ready to watch the, the movies. Because it is an experience and it's something where the kids really get into this. This is like awesome. Um, in terms of time, I'm just cognizant of this. Uh, what I'll do is I'm going to preview this and what I do when I want to preview something like this is I'll simply hit my space bar. In iMovie, Spacebar is probably the most useful tool to get things moving and just to preview quick clips of things that are happening. And that also goes for down here. So if I highlight something here and I want to see it, I'll hit my Spacebar and it will play it for me so I can kind of get an idea of whether or not that's what I want to use. And by the way, those puppies are cute. Um, so with my cursor, I'll preview. So you'll see it moving on the left. Preview in the right. Right, so you get an idea of what that's going to look like, and the kids can keep going back and forth. Another idea is using the third tab up here where my cursor is, and that's the shot list. So the shot list is literally a list of all the shots that need to be taken in order to fulfill the trailer. So Johnny, who is AKA Nora in this case, so main character, we need one clip of Johnny, four clips of action. So it really just, um, you know, breaks it down, really funnels exactly what types of clips are needed for the video. Which is really um, nice for the kids. If, they're, if they take a look oh, yeah. at the template they're following, they have to go shoot those things. Uh, and you kind of follow that principle you're talking about, like more video, and that's something I learned the hard way too, having more video than less yeah. video. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? And the kids are sitting there like, doo doo, wish we could have filmed, and then, you know, we don't have the iPads until next week, and then we're all sitting there, because the kids are all jazzed, you know, and you want to you wanna pick up on that momentum when the kids are really, really excited about a project, and they're really moving on something. You, you kind of don't want anything in your way, and, you know, unfortunately, we, we need to share, so... You know, it is a case of that. Now, I do have a bring your own device uh, policy in my own classroom, so that does tend to lessen a bit of um, issues because many of my students or their parents were ha were pretty pleased to, to download this or already had it previously downloaded to their devices prior to coming to my classroom. Um, so in that sense, you know, we're, we're blessed, and so the kids, um, you know, sometimes if, if we're stuck, they, they've chosen, you know, no, I'll bring my own device, I'll start the filming process, and I can finish and finalize on my own device. And then that way that gives them the freedom to continue to work. Um, going back to our outline here, this is another way of being able to change your titles. But this is also the area where you're going to adjust your, you know, uh, your titles and your credits, as well as whether or not you want colored bars for your film. So just like, just really small stuff, so like, what is what is the you know change in logo style at the beginning, and the kids like to play around with that too. So, you know, the biggest word of advice or two words is definitely film and time. So you need lots of film and you want lots of time, um, and it's okay to have lots of time. Like it's not a big deal to you know uh, take three or four weeks to get something done because. If you, if you allow the students enough time to explore and continue to make mistakes, fix the mistakes, teach each other, because that'll happen too, which is an awesome to watch. A lot of peer-to-peer, -peer, like someone's had a lot of use of this, and then they will help and share. Um, you get so much more learning out of that, because then the kids are like, problem solving for themselves, you're still managing and, and micromanaging small groups that may or may not you know, be on task, or there might be behavioral or other aspects to the classroom that's going on that, you know, you want to be more conscious of, and then the kids are able to kind of problem solve, and then when you give them a new task with iMovie, it will be that much more faster. What was what was four or five weeks is now going to be three, three to four weeks, and then the next task, two to three weeks, because you yourself will adjust your own budgeting of time in the classroom based on the mastery and what's happening with your kids. Yeah, and I find, I find the other thing that is if you go into this unfamiliar with the technology, if you let the kids play and press the buttons and make mistakes and stumble uh, and they start to teach each other, you actually begin to learn a whole heck of a lot as well. Oh, yeah, so it's, absolutely. It's, it's a reciprocal relationship, which is really yeah. awesome. Like, I'm not, I, I am by no means any expert in iMovie. It's something that I've gravitated to in the past. It's something that I've used. I've used this medium for um, presenting everything from professional development to um, sharing out my own, you know, trailers just for fun things I've done for family, um, I've generated movies for, for editing work uh, privately, I've used this software for um, 
uh, presentations at, at you know masters of education level and and a lot of stuff I did with my graduate diploma work was all videographed so um, in in that sense you know it was just something that I really took to and that that's that's a key thing too as a teacher is that you know like this is great and this can be fun and this can be something that your kids are just going to absolutely love um, but it might not be the be all end all for you but it's definitely something that I would I would hope that you would try out because I think all children have an inner uh, filmographer in them. Um, you know, we're seeing a lot of uh, emergence socially of, of misuse of, of social media. We're seeing emergence of, you know, the hashtag selfie. We're seeing this this culture of I, me, my in front of the video. And it would be really neat to kind of integrate that interest and that, you know, spurned cultural uh, shift, but in a classroom sense where we're seeing a lot more positive work being done with the filmography. And who knows, like, you have kids in your class right now that you never know. Like they put a camera in their hand, and that might be that might be it. And ten years from now, they might be in you know photography eleven, making that photo that's gonna that's gonna be be it for them, or making that film. So yeah. you really never know. So it's just about giving the kids those options and choices, and just kind of dabbling in these things to see whether or not this is this is of interest. And for the most part. Um, I've had nothing but um, excellent positive feedback on, on usage of iMovie uh, in the classroom. So um, creating the trailers is a really fun way of doing it. The kids really get into it. And, um, and then in terms of you know, sharing out what, what you have and, and, uh, and such is, is really key yeah. at the very end, you know, celebrating that learning. So. Have, have yeah. you had much experience um, in classrooms with very limited number of devices? Like I know there's um, many classes are fortunate to have uh, one to one, one to two, or a set yeah. of being shared yeah. out. But what about those classes where you know what I can probably get one? Yeah, I started with um, well, my own usage was at the CET, so you can imagine what that looked like. I would go in, spend several hours sitting in front of uh, an iMac hoping that everything would save and then come back to that exact same iMac um, almost daily um, because obviously it wasn't a computer I could take home. Um, and then that spurned into classroom work where, you know, there was a lab. So I worked around logistics of actually using this at the, at the desktop computer level first. Um, and then I started getting into iPads. So the iPads we had at first only 12, maybe 10. So out of a classroom of 30, so you're dealing with, you know, basically an iPad 1 to 3, so, you know, you're dealing with different groups of kids. And yeah, that's still good for group projects. Oh, but yeah, what, I, what I'm looking at is, um, like, I, I know of a number of classrooms that are struggling um, yeah. to, to get more than, literally, have, there's one in the classroom. Um, yeah. I'm seeing ways that this is still going to work. One, uh, one is still project. enough. I think it's, it's just a case of getting creative with what sort of project you're going to want to create. Um, I, in that in that sense, I would totally um, I would totally um, just suggest probably like a classroom work. So everyone's got piecework. You treat it like a jigsaw. So if you're going to create, say, a classroom video um, or an end of the year video, you know, you're collecting a lot of data in the sense that you're going to collect a lot of film and you're going to get your kids to be filmographers, take uh, photos. I know a lot of media centers around their, the districts have uh, digital cameras on loan. I know Langley does. I know Surrey does, I know uh, Delta and Richmond do, um, and uh, these are kind of just the means in which we can kind of get the kids thinking like filmographers and then piece together and edit slowly. I mean, something like that with one computer obviously is going to take a little bit more time, but still doable and worth doing. That's the key. I think the other thing to do, as you're saying that, I'm thinking, you know, if kids do bring their own device and they don't have iMovie on the device, they could still do some of the filming on their device and then Absolutely. share it through some form of cloud-based technology, right? So, or email it, right? I mean, they could they could even do so much as email an attachment or of a clip to you, yeah. and then you have it on that device. So there's lots of different workarounds, but I think it's just a way of getting creative. The one, okay. the one device classroom is is a tough go, but you just have to think about how to bring your whole class in. Yeah, and I, I definitely wouldn't, I wouldn't want classroom teachers to walk away from this pooing this if they, if they are in that situation because you know we're doing a disservice if we do that. I feel that it it, it is workable. Um, like you said, a lot of um, emailing and attachments. That's what I ended up having my students do. Um, what this looks at a primary level is probably more teacher interaction with the software anyways. So yes, you might get some grade ones to, to film something or you 
you have a device in the classroom, like a classroom camera, um, and look, it doesn't need to be major megapixels. It does not need to be an expensive camera. This, we're not dealing with you know crazy stuff. Um, but given what the product will look like at the end, especially when the trailers are involved, it makes it look like a professional product. And if we're viewing this through the eyes of our own students, they're going to think this is the coolest thing since sliced bread. They do. Um, mainly well, because yeah, they, they created it. Yeah, exactly. They've had the ownership. Um, they can see what it looks like when we when we do use piecework and we put all this stuff together. It's pretty awesome. Um, mm -hmm. I'm trying to think what I'll leave you with because I know we're you know, short for time. But the um, yeah, essentially, once you've created your your uh, trailer, you do have the option to share it out, and you can share it to many different areas. This share is no different than what you'll see on your iPad or iPod. The only difference is on the handheld devices the, is that it'll probably generate a little bit more media for you, different outlets of media that you can share it to. Um, I usually save it either to the theater or as a file. Um, saving it as a file exports it so it's you can travel with it. Um, otherwise, it stays on the computer where it is or stays on the device. Yeah. Um, but that's that's a really big. Um, aspect to, to the sharing piece is that there are different ways that you can share out the trailer um, and easy to download and easy to share in different areas. Uh -huh. um, one of the things that I did actually learn the other day because I was really getting tired of how the display was looking, um, I believe it's under the modify menu. Sorry, just give me a second. It's not. Uh, is there? No. No. Preferences? Uh, it would be under iMovie preferences. Window. Yeah. Oh. So if for many of you this may not look like this. You might actually see Nora's stuff on the bottom. So I'll just swap it for you. It's this swap project and event here under the window. Um I prefer to have my work what I'm dragging up to rather than dragging down into. That's just a personal preference, but it's also a little bit more user friendly that way. Um sometimes the kids will get lost as to what this is looking like, and I think we're inclined to look top to bottom. So that's just found under the view menu, sorry, under window menu and swap project and event, mm -hmm. so that you're just changing your windows. Uh, in iMovie 2011, the, that, it's actually just a little button that would be located really close to where you see Norski, the name there. It'll have two arrows. So that's just clickable and it'll switch for you. So, yeah, so. That's essentially what trailers is looking like in the classroom. Um, a lot of district computers I know are still sitting with 2009. 2009 does not have trailers available, um, so it's definitely a recommendation that if you are going to start with iMovie, make sure that you have 2011 or 2013. Um, mm -hmm. But if you download it via a handheld device, such as an iPad or iPod, um, you're going to get 2013 right away. So any, for any of you who have updated to Mavericks recently, you automatically have 2013. That was something else I learned really quickly. I had gotten so used to 2011. <laughs> I know, right? I know. I had gotten so used to 2011, and then uh, I updated to Mavericks. Surprise, surprise. And yeah. um, all of a sudden, I was like, what is this? And warning, yeah. it does it to all of your iWorks and iLife app. So I was not very happy when I had I had just mastered a few like awesome things in Keynote and then all of a sudden Keynote is completely different and um, totally didn't uh, expect that. So iMovie was a little slap in the face as well. I learned how to use 2011 in university and then when, when it updated I was like I don't know what I'm doing in here anymore. Um, so that was awesome to listen to this because I definitely got back on the train of like, oh yeah, that's what these yeah. things do. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, definitely, it's definitely an adjustment at first. I thought this was so different and then of course, you know, the, the can't starts happening. But then I, I've learned to put the dot, dot, dot yet at the end of my statements. So that kind of mm -hmm. helps things along the way. So for totally. anyone who's interested in integrating in this classroom, be patient with yourself. Things do not come necessarily right away, but it's definitely worth the time. Um, like I said, so you'll you have other apps in your classroom or other things that you're using right now technologically that you're integrating into your classroom that you may very well feel comfortable with. You can have this feeling too with this type of software. It just depends whether or not it's your calling and what you're interested in. But I definitely say give it a chance because you, you do have natural filmographers in your class. Mm -hmm. yeah. Cool. Well, thank you very much. That was really mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah. You're um, so
Awesome. So we will be back on Wednesday with Kat, and she'll be covering uh, her second half of the podcast. Um, what is your plan for Wednesday? Um, what I'll probably do is just show you piecework. So what it would look like um, if you were to start a new project rather than a new trailer. Um, I'll probably aim this towards um, the idea of creating an end of the year uh, video. And this is actually what sure. comes a lot at my school is a lot of teachers come to me right around this time and uh, want to know about, you know, how do I get, you know, this to from my photo to here and how do I get all the kids' photos in the line, etc. Obviously, I won't be able to cover everything, but I will be able to give you some basics to get you started. And then, like I said, I'm always available via Twitter. So please email me at kmulski, K-M-U-L-S-K-I, at sdschooldistrict35.bc.ca. I'd be happy, happy answer any of your questions that you have regarding this. Awesome. And that's that's amazing. So thank you very much for that. Um, and perfect timing. So we'll have to make sure we tweet that out and promote it because I'm sure people will be looking for exactly that resource. So that's perfect timing. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, awesome. So we will be back on Wednesday at uh, 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And we will be sharing uh, all of our links on the Google Plus community at Tech Mentorship Network as well as the hashtag on Twitter. So thank you for all of those who joined us tonight. And or if you're watching after the fact, thank you for watching. Thanks, Catherine. Looking forward to Wednesday. Bye.